Welcome back everyone, and if you're new here, just welcome. Today I'll be showing you how to set up your RGH console. Uh, this is for people who either just modded their console themselves and have set it up uh, to boot into Zell, or if you just bought your RGH console and it doesn't have any homebrew apps set up on it yet. Uh, it just boots into the original Xbox dashboard, and if you if you turn on the console on by pressing the eject button, Zell will show up this screen here. So in this video I'll be going over how to install XEX Menu, Dash Launch, and Aurora. So without any further ado, let's just get started. First thing you'll need to do is get a USB flash drive and format it on your Xbox 360. So plug it into your console, navigate over to the system, then storage, and then down uh, at the bottom you'll find, you'll probably find unformatted storage device, but I've already formatted mine. So when you're hovering over it, press Y, go to format, click yes, and then it will format uh, in the proper file system for your Xbox 360. And then once it's done, you can unplug it and plug it into your computer. Alright, so now over on the computer, uh, plug your flash drive in and you should find these two things inside of it. Uh, the content folder and name.txt. If you do not see the content folder, go up to view and then check hidden items and it should show up. Uh, so once you have that done, go to the description, click the three links, the three download links, and uh, we'll download the software we need. So on XEX menu, uh, select the live slash XEX download link. Dash launch, of course, is just the download button. And then for Aurora, scroll down a bit until you find Aurora 0.7b.1 release package. And then uh, you should have all the stuff you need. So when they're done downloading, I like to select them all and extract them each to their own separate folder. Uh, it just makes it easier uh, to, to move them over. So we're going to move Aurora over first. And uh, since it'll show up on our console, whatever this, file, this folder name is, I'm just going to name it Aurora and then we can just drag and drop it into the flash drive. Then we'll do pretty much the same thing with dash launch, except we only need these two folders here. And I'm going to rename this folder to dash launch because again, it will show up on the console just as it's named here. So I'll just grab both of those and move them over to the flash drive. So now for XEX menu, if you open up the, uh, the folder, you'll, you'll find that there's two. There's two of them in here and we will need both. Um, so I'll extract both of these to their own separate folder again. And uh, the live file is going to have to go into the content folder, but the XEX folder can just go straight into the flash drive. And now before we move the, the live XEX menu file into the content folder, we need to make another folder within this folder named 0, 0, 0, 16 zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, now that that's made, we can drag over the code 9999 fo folder into the 160 folder. So now at this point, we have everything that we need on our flash drive. So uh, we'll unplug it, put it back in the Xbox 360. So now over on the console with the flash drive plugged in, we can navigate down to it. And we'll see that there's a 30 megabyte file in the demos folder. Um, so we're going to go in there, it's XEX menu. Uh, so we're going to want to move that over to the hard drive, and then once it's moved over, we can we can go launch it. So we will back out, go to the Games tab, and then under My Games, there's XX Menu. Uh, so let's launch it. Okay, so now in XX Menu, it can be a bit tough to navigate this thing, uh, so click the back button at any time to see what each button does. Um, but what we're going to want to do is move the stuff from our flash drive over to our hard drive. Um, so press right bumper, and sh you should see your USB device. And then um, on Aurora, press Y, click A on copy, and then while you're in this menu, click right on your D-pad, and it should bring you over to HDD1. Um, you can paste it here, but I am going to create a new folder just to keep everything nice and organized, and I'm just going to name it Apps. Uh, that'll store all of the things that we have on our flash drive right now. So, open up the apps folder by clicking A, and now press Y again, and then you can paste your Aurora folder. Alright, so now that's moved over. Um, we'll just press B a couple times. Uh, one time, actually. Press left on the D-pad, go back to the USB, and now we can do the same for Dash Launch. And then the same for Zell Launch.
and then the same for XEX menu. So now at this point, everything from our flash drive has been moved over, which means we can unplug our flash drive, we will not be needing it anymore. Um, so on to the next step, we will be going into dash launch, and then clicking A on the default.xex, and that should bring up dash launch. Okay, so now we are in dash launch. Um, so what we're going to do first is set Aurora as our default dashboard. So while we're hovering over paths, click A, and then scroll down to default, click A again, and then we're going to navigate to where our Aurora folder is. So it's under HDD, Apps, Aurora, and then scroll down to Aurora.xex, and then click A. So now Aurora will uh, be our default dashboard and will launch every time we start the console. So that's really all we have to do in Dash Launch for now. Um, there's one, one small thing to note is that under the Network tab, uh, there will be a whole bunch of things enabled, such as Live Block, Live Strong, etc. The, these will just block any Xbox Live traffic uh, from reaching the console, so you cannot connect to it. Um, if you do want to connect to Xbox Live, you should be using a stealth server so that you don't get banned. Um, I'll be doing a tutorial on how to set up a stealth server at a future date. Uh, so for now, we'll, uh, we'll just leave it as setting up the Aurora as the default path. And uh, we'll want to save this um, so that uh, these settings will, will stay every time we launch the console. So, press right bumper, navigate to HDD, and then press X. And now you see in the bottom left corner, setting save to HDD colon slash launch.ini, and now we're done. Now we can uh, press B to quit dash launch, and then Aurora should be booting up. And there we go, Aurora is up. So now with Aurora up, um, just to make sure that our settings in dash launch were saved, I'm going to click the back button, and then select reboot. And this will restart our console, and it should launch back into Aurora by default. And certainly enough, it did, so we are good to go. Now we can start setting up Aurora. Okay, for starters, uh, I'm going to click back to go to the system settings, and then I'm going to open the file manager, and then down to HDD1, and then press left on the D-pad, and then up top here you'll see that we're in a side directory here. At the very top, new directory. I'm going to make a new folder called Games, and this is just where all of our games are going to be stored on the hard drive. All right, so that is created. We can press B to get back to the main Aurora screen. So now I'm going to press Start to bring up the Aurora Settings menu. Uh, under Profile, I like to select Auto Sign In on the profile that I'll be using, just so I don't have to deal with signing into the profile every time I launch the console. Uh, and then under Content, I'm going to select Auto Scan under Title Updates. And then for Manage Paths, we're going to set up um, file paths for Aurora to scan to find all of our games and applications. Um, so for starters, we're going to find all the applications that we moved over to the hard drive from our flash drive earlier. Um, so click A on Change, navigate to HDD1, and then on our Apps folder, press Y. And then the, the depth, we can keep it at 2. Um, the depth is how many folders deep Aurora will scan to find the executable file that it's looking for. Um, and for, for this case, in the Apps folder, 2 is plenty. So scroll down to Save, and now we will have this path set up. And if we back out to the main menu, you'll notice that we have some things that have appeared. If your console is not connected to the internet, you may notice on the top right hand corner uh, that it says downloading X amount of items. Um, it won't download obviously because you're not on the internet. So let's try to connect to the internet. So press the guide button, scroll over to the settings tab, and then go to system settings. Yes. This will bring us back to the, the standard dashboard with you know what that you're familiar with. And from here we can change our network settings to connect to the internet. Okay, so now you'll see that we are able to connect to the network, but not Internet or Xbox Live. That's good. That's what we want. So, we can just back out. And uh, now to get back into Aurora from here, from the regular dashboard, you can go to, to the Games folder, go to XEX menu, and navigate it through there. But since it's our default every time we launch the console, we can just press the Guide button, Aurora Home, click A, and it'll bring us right back.
So now that we're connected to the internet, we can press the start button under assets, update assets, click download. And now we're downloading all sorts of items up there, you see? And sure enough, we are starting to have our cover art appear. Here are all of our applications that we had set up from our flash drive. So now let's continue on with our settings. Um, so we just set up a path for our, our apps. Let's set up a path for where our games are going to be. So click on add again, change location, and then we're going to find our games folder. Press Y on it. And now we're going to set the depth to, to 4, or maybe 5, depending on how you, how you have your folder set up. Usually 4 is good. It, it works for me. Um, so now we're going to go down to save, and now we have two paths. Since we have nothing in our games folder yet, no new items will appear on the main screen, but we can change that right now. So there's a few ways of getting games onto your RGH console. Um, of course, you can get any game you want if you know where to look for them. Um, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get games you already own on disk onto your hard drive. Um, so right now I have Rock Band 3 in the disk tray. I just need to close it. So it'll read the disk and it'll, it'll pop up that Rock Band 3 uh, has been inserted. So when it does that, we're just going to open up System, go to File Manager. And then soon enough here, DVD will show up. There it is. And then we can open up DVD, and now we can look at the files on the DVD. Um, so what I'm going to do is just press X on each of these to select them all. Press left to go over to the side menu. Click copy. So now they're copied. And then I can go up a few directories. Or a directory, rather. Go to HDD1. Go to our games folder. And then press left to go over to the side menu again. And then create a new directory for Rock Band 3. So now that the Rock Band 3 folder has been created, we can enter it, go left on into the side menu, and then select Paste. So this will paste all of the items from the DVD onto the hard drive so you can play the game without needing the disc. This process would be the same even if you're not doing it on a disc. You would just uh, get the game from whatever source you have, um, put it on a flash drive, or FTP it over, and um, select everything, put it into the, the game's directory, and you're good to go. All right, all the files are done transferring now. Um, so now we can back out to the main Aurora screen again. We'll give it a restart. And now we'll see that Rock Band 3 is there, and, and also right there. This is the one that's on the hard drive. This is the one that's in the DVD drive right now. It's outlined in red that, to indicate that. So I'm just going to remove the disk. And there we go. We just have one copy of Rock Band 3. We could launch it right now. It will work. Uh, but before that, we need to set up the title updates. Um, so click Y when you're hovering over Rock Band, or whatever game it is. Uh, and then scroll down one to title updates. And then press RB once to go to the marketplace. This is where the title updates, uh, you, this is where you can download them from. So I'm going to select version 5, which is the most recent one that allows you to play online. And now that it's done downloading, I can tab back over to the installed tab, and then click A on it to enable it. That way, now, that, now when we launch Rock Band, it'll apply the newest title update, and it will launch correctly, and uh, we'll be on the latest title update we can play online. So that's it. That's about all you need to know on how to set up your RGH console. Um, there's only one more small thing that I'd like to show, um, which is FTP. Um, and that allows you to send files from your computer over to your, your Xbox 360 via a, a client on your computer. You don't need to put files on a, a flash drive or nothing. It'll just get sent right over via the internet. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. To set up FTP, of course, you're going to need to be connected to the internet. So if you're not already, do so. Um, otherwise, you can get started by going to the modules by pressing start. And then make sure FTP server is set to active. Um, go inside of it, um, take note of the, the username, which is Xbox FTP by default, you can change that to whatever. I'm just going to make it Xbox. And uh, set the password to whatever you want, keep it simple, I'm just going to do one, it doesn't have to be secure. Um, and then, back out, go to the system settings, and then take note of what that IP address is. Either write it down, take a picture, keep, your, keep the, the screen up, whatever, you're going to need it later. 
Alright, so over on the computer, go ahead and download FileZilla from the link in the description. Um, you don't have to use FileZilla, you can use any FTP client. Uh, you could also use Xbox 360 Neighborhood for this, uh, but I just I just prefer FileZilla. That's my, uh, my FTP client of choice. Um, so once it's downloaded, go through the setup wizard, open it, and then go to Site Manager. And then we're going to make a new site. I'll, I'll name this one RGH Tutorial. This is not my main console, it's a separate one. And then uh, in the host field, enter in the, the IP address that I told you to remember before. So mine is 192.168.0.42. And then the port was 21. And then for the user, I changed it to Xbox. And the password was just a 1. And uh, we'll just click Connect. And then yes, I'll always allow insecure plain FTP for the server because it's only me on this on the network. It, I don't have to worry about intruders. It's not a big deal. And then here we are. We are connected to the console. This is uh, all the the file systems that we had set up before. So here's our HDD one. We'll enter that. Go into games. There's our Rock Band three. We can access everything from our console on our computer. And that does it for this tutorial. Hopefully that helped you set up your RGH in a pain-free way. Uh, if you have any questions, any problems, please leave them for me down in the, in the comment section. I will try my best to, to help you through it. And um, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Uh, please subscribe for more. I will have more RGH tutorials coming for various other things. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good one.